everybody, welcome to another edition of Star Shadow Plays. I'm Rose Rob, aka Star Shadow. Welcome to my San Marino challenge, except today it's the World Cup 2030 edition uh, that we didn't make, but we're gonna take a look and at what happened and watch the final because I feel like this is the one we could have been in. We just about made it. We were very, very close. We were about 10 minutes away from making it as San Marino. Uh, so I'm interested in seeing because I think next year is our year. Our next cycle is our, our cycle, 2034. Uh, so let's get into it and take a look here at what's going on. There we go, 2030 Group A here. With the new larger groups, larger number of teams involved. So a bunch of groups of three, what is it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 groups of 3. So, so first and second place, I guess. All right. Uh, second place. Nope. All right. So let's take a look here. We got Spain going undefeated in their group. Uruguay second out of group A. Iran not able to do anything, unfortunately, in that group. Group B, Ukraine on top. Tough one with Mexico. Mexico, both both of them with four points, so they must have drawn against each other. Yep, and both won against Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia didn't do anything. So so far, our Asia teams have not done anything, but very very close here. Um. Group C, let's see here. Russia on top, going undefeated. Japan, our first Asian qualifier instead of the, the knockouts. But unfortunately, Nigeria uh, falls on, what is it gonna be? I wonder what this is on. Results, goal differential? Must be gold differential. Yeah, must be gold differential. So Japan, by virtue of only losing 2 nothing against Russia, go through. Nigeria does not go through. Group D. Croatia on top. Undefeated. Two wins. Six points. Chile uh, with the win over New Zealand. New Zealand, of course, not, not exactly would ever be expected to do too much. Uh, but they have not too bad of a showing here. Uh, they scored once, five goals against, so not too bad actually. Uh, yeah, lost two nothing to Croatia and three to one against Chile. Group E, Argentina goes through with the win and a draw. Slovakia with two draws goes through in Ghana. Uh, Africa not showing too well so far. Group F, Norway through with win and a draw. And China through two draws, gets them through. Liberia, ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one there. What do they rank? Oh, well, I don't want to look at that yet. We'll look at them maybe later. But Liberia made it. Uh, again, not too bad of a showing. Didn't score, but only gave up four goals. So it's not too bad. Uh, do you like to enjoy that one? We'll take a look. Why not? Liberia, 94th. China's up to like 60 something, right? 43rd. Wow. Uh, G. Ah. Good old US of A. Goes through with two wins. Serbia finishes second with a win and a, tr a, win and a loss. And Uzbekistan did not get a win. Didn't score either. Uh, but... Good on the U.S. there. Group H. Italy, two wins for all six. And South Korea makes it through on one point. Algeria, oh, that good chance for Africa to get through. Unable to, once again, on goal differential, it looks like. South Korea lost one to two against Italy. While Algeria gave up three goals. Not looking too good for Africa so far. I 
England in this group as you would expect with two wins six points Costa Rica uh, a win and a, a win and a loss there go through second so CONCACAF showing out a little bit here Mali though another Asian competitor unable to get anything done uh, when I wanted to see what the loss one to two loss against uh, Costa Rica Group J France with their two wins and there we go South Africa showing up for for Africa and yeah, going through on goal differential again as Ecuador is unable to close the gap there pretty close matches there 0-2 against France while South Africa held them to one goal that ends up being the difference there Group K Greece on top of two wins Ivory Coast goes through as well with a win and a loss Thailand nothing but not a bad showing there two goals for four against so a couple of 2-1 losses uh, pretty good for Thailand I think what are they ranked 66th Ivory Coast what are you guys 19th Ivory Coast is up to 19 wow not bad Greece is lower than that 24th a good job Ivory Coast there representing Africa there Ivory Coast and South Africa Group L Germany dominating there two nothing or uh, two wins six points Colombia in second with the win and a loss Honduras and CONCACAF not able to do anything gave up seven goals but it's a tough group there kind of had to feel sorry for them there's some definitely weaker groups out there Group M Brazil Two wins from two. Ireland with the win and a loss. Suriname. That's an interesting name getting through. They did score. Who must who, have scored against Ireland? Yep. And then gave up four to Brazil. What is Suriname considered? Africa? African, Caribbean, and Pacific groups. So Africa. Okay. I wasn't sure that was, cause where that could be. That could be cause that's uh, the one on the island off of uh, South America or is it on the South American continent? I think it's the island. Hey, my geography. <laughs> Group N, Belgium. Of course, taking six points. Syria and, and Morocco. Uh, that's a couple of Arab states there fighting it out. And it looks like Syria got through on goal scored as goal differential was the same. So they end up scoring two scored against it scored in both matches while Morocco could only score against Syria. So Syria goes through. So another Asian uh, competitor through. Here we go. Netherlands and Democratic Republic of Congo. Good old DR Congo. Uh, both tied four points. Oh, I'm not sure which way. Hmm. I'm not sure what the differential is on that one to get through. Oh, Netherlands have been randomly chosen over Dr. Congo after both teams finished on four points. Oh, that's... Oh, you can't even see that, so... Right here, it kind of explains it. The Netherlands have been randomly chosen over Dr. Congo. So we got another African in there, but we lost another CONCACAF team. Guatemala, though, would not have been expected to do too much. They're probably ranked, uh, no, 97th. That's a little better. I would have thought, like, 110s. Uh, Congo, DR Congo, 34th. First Netherlands is top 10 team, probably. Eighth, yep. And lastly, Group P, Portugal. Fittingly in Group P with six points. Australia getting through with a win and a loss, and Venezuela unable to get through. What are they ranked? I would have thought they were ranked pretty solidly, 57th, but they did not do too well there. Gave up seven goals. Lost three to one to Australia and four to one to Portugal. Hmm. Crazy. So yeah, I wanted to see. We look at Suriname. I'm forgetting. Oh no, Liberia is what we want to look at. 94th. 
Hunter, that's one of the lower ranked teams. Then Uzbekistan would be 53rd. Uh, trying to see who might be the lowest out of these. Uh, which we could add that in here. It's a uh, ranked, so you can just kind of see them. But nope. All right, so that's the groups. Let's look at second round here. Spain over Mexico, 2 nothing. Ukraine over Uruguay on penalties. That's a good one. Chile over Russia, 1 nothing. Croatia, 4 nothing over Japan. Argentina, 2 nothing over China. Norway, 2 nothing over Slovakia. Norway, of course, uh, this is Erling Holland's Norway. So they're ranked 15th. Yeah. Oh, South Korea beat the US on penalties. Oh, in the second round. Sad. Italy 4 0 over Serbia. England 2 0 over South Africa. France 2 0 over Costa Rica. Colombia 3 1 over Greece. Germany 7 0 on the Ivory Coast. Oof. Brazil 3 1 over Serbia. Uh, Belgium 1 0 over Ireland. Netherlands 4 0 over Australia. And Portugal 2 0 over DR Congo. So, uh, nothing. The one uh, upset, I, big upset here, surprise, is Ukraine over Uruguay. Because Uruguay is 21st. Oh, Ukraine is 50 something, right? 26. Oh, I thought they were down lower. Okay, so that's not much of a surprise then. I mean, Yuri Orlov is a pretty good player. We, we played against him. He plays for Atletico Madrid. He's a pretty good striker, so that's not a surprise. I mean, maybe what Uruguay needs is uh, my captain, Sebastian Harov. They don't want to bring him into the squad, so whatever. They can uh, continue losing all they want then. All right, third round then. Spain 2-2 two two on penalties get through. Chile an extra time 2-0 over Ukraine. Argentina 1-0 over Italy. Very nice. South Korea over Norway? Wow. Where does South Korea rank then? 26th. Lee Jung Siok. That's a pretty solid player. Son Young Hyok. Yeah, they uh, get Man City. Okay, yeah, there's some pretty good players here. Yeah, they've gotten some good luck with some of these regents here. Lee Myung Jin. Yeah, those are pretty good players there. Uh, we do we have a player on there? Did did uh, he get through? Doesn't. Yep, Kwon Ho Sung. That's our uh, one of our center backs. All right, uh, Germany 3-0 over England. Well, that's a surprise there just because England's always overpowered in these things. But 3-0 Germany, that's uh, pretty good there. What was England ranked? Fifth. It's a pretty tasty match though, fifth and fourth. France 3-0 over Colombia. Brazil 2-0 over Portugal. What's Brazil at first and Portugal? 11th, oh. Belgium, what is Belgium? Belgium was 8th, 9th. What is Netherlands at 10th, 8th? So Netherlands, 3 nothing over Belgium. Hmm. So only this, this South Korea one still kind of surprises me, even though they're ranked pretty evenly, because Norway's got Erling Haaland still. And Argentina over Italy. Argentina's 10th, though. Italy... Uh, sec Italy is 2nd? Wow. And they have, you know, for my youth intake, Nicola Monaldini. That would have been fun to see him playing in in the final, but unfortunately didn't make it. And of course, they have uh, Alessandro Cacchetti. Came from our youth intake as a goalkeeper. Did they not bring up? I oh, know, Alessandro Mancini's right here. And, oh, Andrea Bacciocchi, actually. 
Looks like he's getting some starts here. That's that's where a lot of our representatives are right now. Quarterfinal. Spain 3 0 over South Korea. South Korea's Cinderella run comes to an end. Chile runs into Argentina and loses 3 1. The Netherlands 3 1 over Germany. Oh, and that's a match here. France versus Brazil 3 3. Penalties. Mm. I gotta see. What we got here for penalties here. Oh, two misses right away for out of the gate by France. Oh, that's rough. Look at this. Ooh, they were XG all over the place here. Good match. Brings it to the semifinal. Spain won nothing over Brazil. Nice. Spain ranked third. I don't think we have anyone on on this team. Mm. No. And Argentina won one over the Netherlands on penalties. Oh, a miss right away to open it for the Netherlands here. Three straight from Argentina before a miss, but then uh, two misses there by the Netherlands. That's, that hurts. Might have just edged that match of it, uh, but disappointment, very much so. There we go. Uh, that's gonna set up our, our final then. So third place playoff, Brazil over the Netherlands, one nothing. Which brings us to our final, Argentina and Spain. Argentina has one of our players, Rene Samaniego, who uh, obviously, I guess I'm playing a little bit here. So kind of dropping a little bit, but that will go back up once he comes back. Uh, so good player. You played very well for us this past season in our Champions League winning season so that's good good to see us have a representative in uh, in the final Spain like I said we don't have one I thought we might we might have signed one we just because we just signed a wonder kid but I don't see him but yeah this is gonna be this is gonna be a very a very interesting matchup here so let's uh, let's go to it. We're we're attending it. We're gonna see how it goes. I'm excited, excited to see this World Cup final here. Argentina Spain is gonna be a good match. Of course, uh, maybe playing in Spain. I wanted to look at the teams here, so. Before we go, oh, we're not gonna be able to, to look at the teams, I guess. Let's we do it this way. Hmm, watching it. Attending seems to have done this, so. We're just gonna have to kind of go through here because I don't have any controls done here, so. Oh, well, that's. I wanted to see that. Ah. Maybe that will come back up and we can take a look at the, at the lineups here. So first minute here. Sanchez down the down the right. Crossing for Ansu Fadi. Oh, headed over the bar. Here we go. So Argentina coming out in a four two three one. And Spain in a 4 3 3. Take a look here, what we got here. Rivero, goalkeeper for Argentina. Where are you at? Braga. <laughs> Under bid, though. Fulham, Schalke, Krasnodar. All vying for, for this, this keeper here. Not bad. 
uh oh San Diego got a got a start nice so we have a World Cup finalist starting uh Latara Martinez oh here we go we can see Anibal Perez Lester oh I remember him he was actually in MLS uh was a wonder kid there and we had thought about we did try to buy him actually uh but we went to this was before we really blew up um so he's he's good uh juan lopez in the middle in the number 10 that chelsea hmm. from boca juniors 24 million hmm. raise your dollars too so at less than euros or pounds and uh, nicolas bernardo Aston Villa at Aston Villa here, Aston Villa. <laughs> Give me my Spanish pronunciations and English pronunciations are kind of starting to come together a little bit. Uh, uh plate, Zagreb got bought for twenty six million. I I remember looking at him, but. There was something about him I was like I wasn't too interested in. I've forgotten now. But we did look at him. Uh Axel Camacho. Yeah, we never had a chance at him. Great name though. Of course, that's ours. Diego Porta. Real Sociedad. He's pretty solid too. Fabian Blengio. Or Blengio, I guess. At Bayern. Ooh, elite tackler. Chiro Vicente. Gotta be uh, Italian pronunciation here. At Sporting. Not bad, not bad, not bad. What do we got over on the Spanish side? Juanma. Barcelona. Elite striker. Yeah, he's pretty good. Uh, Ansu Fadi, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with already. Liverpool. He's at Liverpool now. Let's take a look and see how that went down. Bought for 124 million from Barcelona. Oof. Did pretty well. Mostly, and then it kind of dropped off here. Must have been injured. Uh... Rafael Sanchez, who we just saw with the ball. Bayern. Yeah. Oriba, Barcelona still. World class midfielder. I think that pretty much does it all. <laughs> Head three at Dortmund. Yeah, he's starting out pretty well too. Fidel, I like, I like that. <laughs> what a name. Another attacker. He's playing away. Wow, he's playing as the holding. Ooh. Not, definitely not playing much defense here. Yeah, he's been at Real Madrid all the time. Juan Miranda. Barcelona. Pau Torres, Liverpool. Let's take a look at what we got here. Uh, is that Villarreal? Got bought for 65 by PSG. Or for 65 million for PSG. Sold at a loss, actually. That's surprising. To Liverpool. <laughs> Carlo Ruiz. Real Betis. Like Perugoni, he was the one I looked at, but went to Manchester United. We never had a chance. And at their Echbaria, at Bari, I believe. Not so good with my Basque pronunciations. Our goalkeeper at Wolfsburg. Wolfsburg. 
He is not a special keeper at all. All right, so that's what we're looking at here. All right, looks like Spain's going to have the having the better of it early on. We're into the fourth minute, Pedri to Ansufati out to Miranda. Crossing. Ooh. Pedri going to pick it back up. Golni on the right, sinking himself into the box. Cuts back for Pedri. Oh, it's Sanchez though. Now Argentina is going on a break, but that's going to end the highlight here. Free kick, played to Lautaro Martinez. Lopez back to him. Oh, ho, 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 ho. offside though. Lovely little reverse pass there. Lovely little reverse pass. That was tricky. Very, very tricky. Pretty even though. Kind of cagey now. After that opening few minutes of... Uh, it looked like we could have a pretty open match, but... Definitely slowed it down a bit here. 26th minute. Argentina with some possession. Long ball. Gets to Lopez. Oh. Camacho. Perez to Lautaro Martinez. Wow. I thought he was going to bury that. Good save there by there. Spanish coming back now. Sanchez. Crossing. No one no one there though. Headed clear, but we're in a lot of space. I'm surprised. They are obviously not concerned. Oh, Ansu Fadi. Oh, that didn't miss by much. That didn't miss by much. I'm surprised that Travero didn't react stronger to that. Five minutes until halftime now. Long ball. Bernardo one in the air. Lopez back to look. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Great job by the keeper to come out. Not looking long. Oh, how did Juanma get to that? Foyth. Good tackle there in the box. Spain's going to keep coming though. Sanchez. Ooh, a little tricky. Back hill out to Gunyi. Getting into the area. Oh, good cross. And now Antupai is going to put one away. The header there for the goal. 1-0 Spain. 42nd minute. In the World Cup final. World Cup 2030 final. They've been aiming at Ansu Fadi the whole time, and he finally put one away. Here he is again. Now it back to Fidel. Oh, a little reverse pass there to Moriba. Good save, though. Spain starting to open up Argentina a little bit here. Ahead in halftime. You can see it through the XG numbers. 0.66 the XG for Spain. Just 0.27 from Argentina, though they had... Great opportunity from Lataro. Uh, be chalked out for offside, even though he missed. That would have been a big XG boost too. But they've had some chances, and it's surprising that they haven't managed to to really cash in on one. Spain, though, playing a lot of a lot of balls into the box, aiming for Ansu Fati. He's winning winning a lot of a lot of balls in the air, so he did manage to put one away. Got up, rose, rose uh, highest over the fullback after the keeper came out and kind of flapped that out a bit. So all he had to do is steer it on goal, and he did. Still full credit there that he had to had to work for that. Here we go. Second half start. Spain going to continue to press on. Try and take advantage of, of their momentum that goal a few minutes before halftime. Argentina with the first chance. Oh, Lopez. Just outside the box. Great save by Adair. Really making me look foolish there by calling him an okay keeper. Now Spain's going to be on the break after that corner is cleared. Sanchez. Dinks passed. Good save there by Cravero and Sanchez. I don't know why he 
pounced on that. I probably should let that go for a corner, but got a little excited, I think. Reba to Fidel looking for Fadi. Oh, looking for two. Looking for that brace. That was a nice little defense splitting pass. We couldn't score at the near post. Reba down the right. Cross blocked. And that's going to end that. Oh no, it's not going to end that highlight. I thought it was going to. Looked like nothing was going to come from it, but Pedri now. Crosses. Oh, how'd that get through to Juanma? Headed it wide. Obviously, he thought that the center back was, was going to head that and missed it completely, giving him the opportunity, but it's tough when, when the center back, uh, you're expecting the center back to get to it, but always got to be ready. Never know when, when that chance of fall. Get to be kicking himself for not being ready. Goni, oh, Pedri, unmarked. Just outside the six yard box. Not gonna miss from there. Powerful shot into the lower right corner there. To the keeper's left. Two nothing Spain. In the, uh, what was that, 50, 52nd minute, 51st minute? Spain looking really in control here. The Argentinian defense is not doing much. Juanma with the opportunity there. I thought. I might do a little bit better, but there's good good save there by Crevero. Oh, another look at Fidel winning a, a header in the air now. Let's look at these jumping reaches here and see if they're actually... Yeah, Fidel, jumping reach of 11. Decent header to the ball, though. Decent strength. Eh. Surprised he's winning the balls in the air. Mariba, of course, pretty good jumper. Not much strength, but pretty good header, so that's surprising that they're going for it. Ansu Fadi, though, 12 jumping. Is he not, not somebody you would expect to be aimed for with balls in the box, but he's winning them. So, more power to him for that. Coming up against uh, Foyth, who... Well, not bad himself in the air. I don't know why he's not winning more. And, I mean, center backs are not bad in the air. We already looked at, at them. and But they're getting beat all... Heads up all over the place here. Headers one. Look at that. 56% there. 58%. Uh, by Spain. Argentina not playing very well here. We're getting it we're in the 60th minute. Hmm. Is Argentina gonna put anything together? Really do seem completely out of sorts here, getting completely outplayed. Oh, Mariba, great header. Oh, Juanma. <laughs> oh. Gotta do better there, I think. Spain truly in control now. They're just coming in waves. Goni. Oh, that got knocked down by his own man. Martinez off Sarmiento in for Argentina. As Anibal Perez will go to center striker spot. Back Alistair. Okay. Oh, oh, it's an opportunity there for Vicente. And oh, could not do anything with it. That was a good. Very good free kick there by Alexis McAllister from Bayern. Wow. As the ball come, has come on, Daniel Mall has come on as well for Spain. Guido Prado, uh, Real Sociedad, has come on for Argentina, who has not played very well. I mean, Trevero has played decently. Uh, San Diego has played decently. And Sarmiento has come on now and has tried to provide spark as well as McAllister, but not really too much. As you see, Juanma here has not done too much. And Ferran Torres has come on too as well. Looks like, yeah, time's running now for Argentina. Five minutes to go. Not creating much of anything. Oh, here we go. 
A free uh, good corner there, but no one attacking it. Gonya able to clear of the Sarmiento. Porta. Once again. Oh, San Diego. Oh, San Diego there. Ooh, that would have been a one strike and a half. Clip the bar going over. Ooh. Well, they're attacking, but to no avail here. 30 seconds left. One mile on the run. Flicks it over to Fidel. Just, oh, Danielma. Back to Huama. Oh. Doing a little show time here. And that's it. Two nothing Spain. Get to win the 2030 World Cup. Good performance there. Pretty dominant performance, actually. Argentina did not look like they were up for it today, unfortunately. Had a wonderful run to the final, but unable to get the job done. So congratulations to the Spanish national team for a win here in the 2030 World Cup. Of course, one of the hosts. So uh, you would expect the host to do very well. And they have. I'm just sad that we didn't have a representative on the Spanish team, but uh, we have a couple of Spanish kids in our system now that we're gonna that we're trying to develop, and hopefully, uh, we can do that and we can bring them in uh, into their side. There, that'd be awesome. I would love to to have more players in in big side World Cups. So of course, next cycle we expect to be there, and we expect to. To definitely show out a little bit probably maybe not quite this well but you know at least show up a little bit it will depend on on what kind of youth come through the next couple seasons because we definitely need some center backs but yes that's uh that's our world cup here ah uh. So we're next playing in the Nations League, which will hopefully be the next episode for us. Uh, that's not for a couple months still, in, in uh, September. Open up in Nations League C, we should be able to to win this league. Uh, going away, I think. I mean, Finland's going to be our biggest. Uh, rival here rank 75th but uh they're not any better than we are talent wise in fact we're probably better uh federal islands we should sweep out the way and estonia is also 129 so they are sitting about what we are at 128 we're actually ranked the end of them and we are definitely better than that we're definitely uh, inside the top 100 not more but yes look at that boom 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 and this is actually this is a World Cup. We were so close to making it. For those that don't know, we had a low. We started off hot in qualifiers, ran to a tough spell here as we faced it, uh, the top three ranked teams. Uh, got a good draw against Czech Republic, though. Looking back, maybe uh, we should have been looking to beat them, uh, but then lost to Belgium, as you would expect. And then lost three nothing to Denmark at home, which really looked like it ended our qualification chances. Uh, but then rattle off an expected win against Belarus. I actually would have expected to beat them more by more. Big win over Malta. Then we came back at home, beat the Czech Republic, and then saw in the final weekend that we would qualify if we won both these matches. Of course, they're the top two teams in our group, and we took care of business. At, uh, on the road against Denmark, as a matter of fact. 1-2-1, one, one, that was a big match, great match. And that left us for an opportunity, win and we're in. It was what, what it was at that point. Against Belgium, top 10 team. We actually held the lead for 80 minutes, and then we gave up two late goals. Couldn't hold on. If we were able to hold on, we would have made it through as a, as a second place uh, qualifier. But uh, we still finished in second, but we were bottom of the of the group. Actually, if we click it, I could have showed you there. 
uh, finished on 19 points, but since we were in a sixth place, uh, our six team group, we didn't get the benefit of all those places of all those points. So we actually finished bottom. Uh, so yeah, if we had one 16 points, puts us right here. So we would have definitely made it. So it's really disappointing because like I said, we 80 minutes. We are, we're in, we were just about ready to celebrate. We were getting, getting ready and then they hurt us and then we had to attack. And they scored again late. Draw wouldn't have done it, as you can see. Uh, draw, so draw would have only got, got moved us up to there. That so it wouldn't have done any, any good. So we had to go for it, and that they hit us on the break. Uh, we were hoping they did come out and not play all of their best players, so they brought a bunch of them off the bench. Uh, so that was probably why we were up. We were able to get to get a jump on them, but. Because they were qualified at this point, but eh, so close. So next season, or next cycle, I think, I think we're good. Uh, on the club side here, we're in the middle of transfer season. We got players that are moving. We're going to be trying to move at this point. Jose Luis Sosa, of course, has been was unsettled by Manchester United, and I hate those guys now, especially. And now they don't want to sell, they don't want to buy. So he was promised that he could leave if he got bid for 70 million. No one's even looking at this point. So he's on sale, doesn't want to sign a contract. We've been trying to sign a new contract, but one of the best keepers in the world in Bear Tony for a while. Once again, Manchester United unsettled him and now managed to trip his release clause. Uh, so they have a bid of 100 and. 114,000 or 114 million come through which I would definitely reject it anyway uh, so we've been trying to get him a new contract since uh, the winter when they people were starting to to bid and he you know until didn't want to sign a contract even though he's got a contract for a couple years still so I'm probably gonna lose him who is you know backbone to our team to Manchester United who hasn't done anything in a couple of seasons. I guess they won Premiership this past season, but who cares? They're not two-time Champions League finalists in the past two years, including a win. Factor of reputation is right next to ours. Uh, and I think we would beat them all over the place. So, not much... Not, not too happy about that. Jao Paulo uh, asked for a freaking huge contract, so probably going to have to move him as well. Wanted 13 million a year. I was like, eh, no one else is making over nine, nine and a half. I did nine, 9.7, I think. 9.8. So I wasn't about to blow up my wage structure for him. He's good, but, um, we're looking out for some more players. But I mean, if we get money, we're going to have to reinvest it. I mean, I don't think we could be able to find a keeper. We're not going to be able to find a keeper. Let's put it that way. That, to replace Bear Tony Wu. Mesa will have to become our starter. Still got potential, but it's not quite what it Bear Tony's is. Uh, so he'll get a start. He'll get the first minute. We'll buy another backup. We have an eye on the Greek one, Greek winner kid 20 because we're still sticking to our uh, only buying U21s. Um, so with him gone. So we're gonna have some money apparently, um, and we looked at buying. Uh, da, 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 or list. Looking at uh, Yasir Yikpui, who is good, as you can see, very good. Uh, this would be our Jiao Paulo replacement. I was costing a lot of money. Not too happy about that, but we'll well we're gonna go for that. Uh and then we're looking at the keeper here. He's pretty much kind of the same as like what 
Mesa would be. Mesa would be. Uh, perfection perfectionist. On a kid. Uh, he looks pretty good too. So I mean, I would probably bring him in. Uh, and let those two battle out to see who's going to be the number one. Because uh, there's not really any other keepers that are available. Oh. Actually, I didn't see you, Finn Jorgensen. How good are you? You don't have a ton of potential. You're not bad too, and you're cheap too. Hmm. You might be new, actually. Doesn't, no, he's not very consistent, though. That kind of sucks. Uh, I was hoping to see if he was going to be able to improve further. Uh, but we're also looking at, at young players to bring in as well. Uh, to be trained at the club for three years so um we are looking at uh newton Miltau as a uh someone to bring in kind of uh maybe box to box maybe as a dm uh because he's a pretty good tackler and he's got a little bit of jump and reach here 18 so he would he would be, he could be turning 19. Uh, so, but he would still be able to make that jump for us. And we're looking at Hudson Bruno. 17 year old, he'd be coming in the winter transfer window, which would be fine. Uh, he needs a little bit of work before he'd be something we would work with, but not bad. And we're also looking at uh, Jeffrey Vanavik. Or Vindabic. Another center back, because we need center backs. More center backs. We can always use more center backs. More good center backs. Uh, so he would be a another one to kind of grow. Uh, 19, I don't know if he would hit, end up hitting the three years at the club. Be under 21, uh, but maybe. But he's, he's good enough that we would want to ha have him anyway, I think. Let him kind of grow a little bit more. Like someone like this, a 16 year old to look at. But that's kind of what we're thinking now. We're trying to bring in high potential young players to get trained at the club. Uh, Cause that's, you know, with the Italian rules now, uh, we have to have four four and eight yeah four trained at the club for three years between 15 and 21 and then eight trained in Italy between 15 and 21 and uh, a lot of the Italian prospects out there aren't that great so uh, basically it's our youth intake and then any young players that we can bring in to to work with so right now we have 14, but some of those are also, uh, actually, no, that's ones that are in right now. So 14 of what we have are both, of course, club and Italy. So we've had a few that just got their, uh, I don't know, certification or whatever, <laughs> status, homegrown status. And, uh, and like, um, yeah. There's eight today. That's good. And like, um, Jao Paulo would get it. Would be in two years, but he's young enough that he would get it, which would kind of hurt. But like I said, with that contract, he was asking for it. Been like, eh, wrong try again. Uh, we could look at Giacomo Gualandi as, uh, as an option as a starter, but he's not developed and he didn't have the potential we were hoping he would have. So, Probably gonna sell him on and let him go. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see what, how we do. I mean, I guess there's still a small chance that Bertoni will decide that he will stay. Uh, Cause 
we're better than Manche Manchester City in every way that matters. Um, uh, unfortunately, we're still our league rank is still third, which sucks. I mean, Roma has been trying. They made it to the semifinal uh, both season, the past two seasons. Um, but uh, want to look at the world here, clubs. List. Okay, so reputation wise, you see, yeah, we moved all the way up. Where are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seventh club and reputation at this point? That everyone major all. Let's just make sure it's all. Yeah, so that didn't change. So, I mean, we're finally the most prestigious club in Italy. Like, that's what happens when you win a Champions League. Uh, so we're now battling it. We're actually more prestigious than Real Madrid and Juventus, which is pretty funny. Um, and yet all these English teams down here seem to think that they can come in and, and just buy my players for some reason. I don't understand. You have like Wolves came in and was like, oh, we want to try and buy one of your best players for 12 million. I'm like, what? <laughs> Ridiculous, but... Uh, where are the coefficients? That's the one I kind of want to... That might be the one that I need to see. Can I see Koei? No, they're not going to show it that way. Uh, finances, that might work. Financial status, nope. Rich, we're 11th. I don't know if this is actually like what's in the bank, but if that's the case, then I can't be with his US teams all up on top. And now all the English teams are here, so I was gonna say we're even richer than Man City, even though we're not. Oh, I, I would probably have to go to uh, Europe to see the coefficients. Milan's eighth. Well, that's not too bad. Do we have any other? Yeah, we're we're all scattered right here. So, uh, no, this is. What's hurting Juventus didn't help us out seven points. Inter even got 17, so I mean, that kind of hurts too, but I, I maybe, maybe then with this season then, because we're going to drop that last season with nothing. Maybe that'll help us get up there. Uh, I want to see where... Where is Manchester City? Oh, they're there, fourth. I mean, they've been solid, but come on. Hundred, okay. Oh, I'm um, was comparing and see who's on, who's higher. I guess they are higher than us, but that's again, that's because they have that extra, extra one, and we're gonna. So we're gonna be up here. We might be, if we have another good Champions League run, we may be a top team. But if we lose Baritonia, it's not gonna, not gonna matter. Alright, so I rambled enough. <laughs> then this ended up being a long, a long one. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the World Cup. Hopefully, the next cycle, we'll be able to, to be in it ourselves. Uh, so we'll be back. Uh, we'll see what the next episode is gonna be. Hopefully... Uh, either we're going to do uh, the Super Cup, uh, which we have against Porto, or we'll do the, the next uh, international weekend. So thank you all for hanging out and watching. Really appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, share all that good stuff here in the video. Uh, shout out to all the subscribers already here. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, there's links in the description to the Twitch and the Twitter. 
Uh, if you would like to hang out a little bit, you can definitely check that stuff out. Uh, so, yeah, thank you all for hanging out, watching. Like I said, really do appreciate it. Stay good, stay safe, everyone, stay well, and I will see everyone next time.